The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication. Podcast publishing made easy. Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Now, set back and enjoy this week's audio play. The House of Squibb, the manufacturing chemist of the medical profession since 1858, bring you Academy Awards. The pictures, the players, the techniques and skills which have won or been nominated for the coveted awards granted each year by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to each in his field for outstanding achievement. The House of Squibb, makers of the great family of Squibb medicinal products, brings you the distinguished star, Victor McLaughlin, Margot Graham, Wallace Ford, and J.M. Carrigan, playing the roles they created for the screen in The Informer, the picture which in one year received four separate Academy Awards. Mr. McLaughlin will star in the role of Jippo Nolan, for which, as the best actor of 1935, he won the Academy Award. <laughs> This is the story of Ireland. It is the story of a traitor. In our history, the revolution of the 13 colonies against the crown was jeopardized by the infamy of one man. And our name for this traitor was Benedict Arnold. In the dark, bloody history of Ireland's revolt for freedom, there were many Benedict Arnolds, many a man who took the king's shilling. One of these we tell of today. The scene of his crime is Dublin, and the time, a tense week of rebellion in Ireland's not-so-distant past, when the underground Republican army fought for its life against the occupation police known as the Black and Tans. This is the story of the informer. In a fog, clinging and wet from the sea, making golden ports of call of shop windows in the gloom. A hulking brute of a man walks warily down an ancient Dublin street, past strollers, past soldiers, past idlers, past singer and his tear-bringing song, past the leaded panes of Dublin shops, past... No, to pause suddenly, riveted before a poster on a brick wall... Twenty pounds. Twenty pounds reward. Wanted for murder. Frankie McPhillip. They want him. Why, the dirty... Twenty pounds for Frankie. He tears down the poster, but the words tear at his brain. Twenty pounds for murder, my friend. Frankie McPhillip, God save him. Twenty pounds from the crown. Why, the dirty... Down Dublin's ancient street in the fog strolls the towering darkness of a man. And after him, dogging his heels relentlessly, blown by the wind, follows the torn, tattered scrap of paper that was a poster on a brick wall, wraps itself around its ankles. He stops near the window of a travel agency and speaks to a girl who has walked out of the gloom. Gippo! Ah, Jippo, I can tell by the look of you. It's no use. I'm hungry and I can't pay my room rent. And you staring into that window reading about things other people can enjoy. Ten pounds to America. Information within. Ten pounds to America. Twenty pounds and the world is ours. Now, what are you saying that for? Saying what for? Twenty pounds? What are you driving at? Ah, Jippo, what's the matter with you? Twenty pounds... Might as well be a million. Go on, go on with you. Get your 20 pounds from the gutter. Thank Jippo. Too good for me, eh? Well, let me tell you something. You're no better than any other man. You're all alike. Oh, Katie, I, I, I didn't mean that. Oh, go along with you and your fine principles. I can't afford it. Katie. <laughs> Back 
Back into the gloom fades the bedraggled, hungry woman. And slowly, carefully from behind Jippo, into the little island of light, comes the face on the poster. Jippo. Jippo, man. I'm lucky to be finding you here. Man, what is it? What are you staring at? Nothing, Frankie. But you came up to me so sudden like... I guess I'm getting jumpy. Finding out there's a price on my head, 20 pounds. Six months is a long time, my boy, to be on the run. So I says to myself, I'll sneak into town and see my mother and I'll duck her out again and here I am. Did you deliver my message yet? And what did my mother say? Oh, she blessed the saints you were alive. She followed me out crying and put a half a quid in my hand to give you. Well, I was that hungry myself that I spent it. Ah, you big lubber. That was her way of giving it to you. She likes you, Jippo. The Lord knows why. What's come over you? What are you gawking at? Is there something queer about me? No, Frankie, you see, I've been caught martial. Man, what for? Uh, you remember the turn that killed Queen Karen? We drew lots for it, and I got the short match. I couldn't kill him, Frankie. He swore he'd desert if I let him go. And you believed him. What did Commandant Gallagher say? Oh, he near plugged me when I went back to report. Now the British think I'm with the Irish, and the Irish think I'm with the British. And the, the, the long and short of it is, I'm walking around starving without a dog to lick me drowsy. Never you mind me, bucko. We'll be together again. Wait and see, like the old days. It's your help I need now. I've looked you up first thing to find out if the Tans are still watching my mother's house. Is there a guard? Not since Christmas. Good. I'm off. If I get a chance, I'll see Gallagher and I'll put a word in for you. Up the rebels, my boy. Up the rebels! Ten pounds to America. He wants to see you, sir. Let him come in. Yes, sir. Go in, you. Yes? Well, uh, I... Uh, it was like this. I... I... Well, speak up. Well, what do I, you want to say? Well, I, I've come to, uh, I've come to claim the reward. The twenty pounds for Frankie McPhillip. Mary, the bread's that fresh, I can't cut it. Look at the crumbs it makes. Mother. Oh, Mary. My boy, my boy. Oh, Frankie. Praise be to God you've come back to Save your praises for this fog that's upon us, Mother. It's the best friend I have this night and me dodging down dark streets to get here. Ah, mm. uh, I was so homesick to see you. I'd have walked down the middle of a connell street just to get a glimpse of the two of you. I'm a shammy son, sure you must be starving. Frankie, you shouldn't have come. It's not safe. What a long face for a sister. <laughs> I'm in with the fog and I'm out with the fog and nobody will be the wiser. You're sure nobody's seen you? Just my old pal, Jeffo Nolan. You see, I had to find out if the pans had a guard in the house. Now, you have a nice cup of tea. You can do all your talking afterwards. No. Open up. We've got you, Miss Phillips. Go on, Frankie. Don't stop her on. No. 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 Out of the way. Frankie. 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 Yes. Right. Well, Sandra? They call, sir, about Nick Phillips. You just killed trying to escape, sir. Thank you. There. The 20 pound award. You better count it. Show him out the back way. Thanks. Come on. Out you go. I've got to have a plan now. I've got to have a plan. Ah, Jibbo. I'm your brain. You can't think without me. You're lost. You're lost, my fine friend. No, no, the devil take it. Oh, I need a drink. <laughs> yes, a double whiskey. Jippo. Uh, what, do you, what, what do you want to be sneaking up behind a man like that for? Oh, I'm sorry I blew up on you like that out in the street, I mean. Ah, Jippo, you know how I love you. I got it. I did it for you. You did what? Never mind. There's your change. Jippo, where did you get that money? Look at it. And not an hour ago, you hadn't a penny to warm your pocket. Did somebody die and leave you a pot of gold? What are you saying that for? Or did you rob a church or what? Ah, that's it. You, you mean that if you robbed a church? Yes. 
No, 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 he wasn't at church. He was a sailor of an American ship. I went to him at the back of Cassidy's pub on Jerome Street. But if you say a word, you'll get me into trouble. Who, me? What do you take me for? An informer? What do you talk about informing for? You fool. Oh, who's an informer? You fool. Oh, don't be saying things like that. What's the matter here? Oh, he's all right, Barney. Let him alone. He, he didn't mean any harm. Oh, come on, Jippo. Let's get out of here. Look out for the blind man, Jippo. Here, we'll get a cab. Hey, wait, wait. Bad luck to let him pass. Here, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And may God bless you. Jippo. Oh, he knew me. Jippo. You gave him a pound note. What's the difference? Look, you go home to your room and get some food in. And I'll be there as soon as I can. Oh, but Jippo, where are you going? I just remembered something. Uh, they'll be wondering whether I'm not there already. Who? Where? Uh, thank you, Philip's mother and sister. I got to go to the wake. <laughs> Are they all up there? All up in the rooms, Jippo. Thanks, lad. It is a pity about the poor boy, Frankie. But tis easy seen, it was the work of an informer. Tis sure. Tis the work of an informer. Oh, Frankie, my son, my son. I'm sorry for your trouble, Mrs. McGee. What are you shouting for? Don't you know there's a wake going on? Let him alone, Bartley. Sure, he was a friend of my dead body. All the same, you should show more respect for the dead. I'm sorry. It's tears in me eyes I have and a blow of the nose that I'll be having with me handkerchief. You dropped some coins, Jibbo. Let him alone. Sure, I was only trying to give them back to you, Mr. Nolan. I swear by all that's holy, I, I warned him not to keep away from the house. Heavens, Jibbo. There's no one suspects you. Uh, you've been very good to me, Mrs. McPhillips. I'm sorry for your trouble. There, there. Maybe a few coins will help you. Why, Chip? Thank you. But we thought you... I, I came into a little something, Mary, a little something. You know, I wasn't counting on. I'll be going down with you, Chip. Man alive, what are you hurrying for? Who's hurrying? Oh, don't be getting your rag out, me boy, oh. It's a free country, and a man can ask questions without all this gossiping, especially from an old pan. Are you working now? No! And don't be shouting at me like an aboriginal. Sure, you can't blame me and Bartley for taking an interest in you for old time's sake, seeing as how you were one of us at one time. You don't seem to be in the need of money tonight, Jibbo. You little stinker. I'll teach you to dug me. But, Bartley! What's wrong, boys? What are you up to? He suspects me. Suspects you of what? I didn't say anything, Bartley. You're a liar. You did, both of you. I know you're Barley Mulholland and Tommy Connor. You're Gallagher's right-hand man, and I just... Shut up, Jippo! Are you mad? Don't you know there are people listening? Well, then, don't be accusing me, then. Come on, then. Let's be getting out of here. No. Commandant Gallagher wants to see you. Well, I'm not going. You're not scared of the commandant, are you? Scared? I'm not scared of the finest man that was ever well. Good. Come on, then, Jippo. This way. <laughs> Oh, that's fine whiskey. Nothing like the king's whiskey, Dan. Danny, there isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. Anything. Ah, it's nice to be friendly, Gallagher. I go through fire and water for you. Who informed on Frankie McPhillips? Uh, wait, wait, wait. I, I, I'll tell you, Danny. Uh, it was that rat Mulligan. Mulligan? Mulligan, the tailor. Yes, it was the grudge. <laughs> yes, uh, he had a grudge against Frankie. It was a... Oh, it's a long, long story. Uh, there's another little drink in the bottom of the bottle. Take it. He's already killed two or four bottles, Dan. Come on now, Jippo. What grudge are you talking about? The grudge? Oh, oh the grudge. Uh, yeah, the, the sister. Mulligan's sister and Frankie... Uh, so Mulligan got sore and he informed on him. 
I see. Yeah, I saw him going to the time quarters tonight. What time? Time? Oh, eight was uh, uh, half past six. Well, <laughs> are you taking me back, Danny, me boy? If your statement checks, you'll get back. There'll be a court of inquiry tonight at half past one at the ammunition dump. Oh, Barkley, take him up. Uh, all right, Barkley, me boy. You'll find me at Katie Madden's. All right. Show him out, boys. <laughs> In a moment, we will continue with the second part of Academy Award. Have you ever come across a bed of fresh green mint on a summer's day? If you have, you've probably picked a few leaves, crushed them between your teeth, and enjoyed the sudden cool tang of delightful refreshment. Well, you'll recall that experience every time you brush your teeth with Squib Dental Cream. Yes, you can taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. For the fresh minty flavor of this quality dentifrice also wakes up your mouth, leaves it exhilarated, pleasantly alive. And you're going to notice a refreshing new sparkle in your smile because the active ingredient in pure Squib Dental Cream is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective polishing agents known to dental science. So for pure refreshment, morning, noon, and night, any time you brush your teeth, brush them with Squib Dental Cream, one of the great family of Squib products. Use Squib Dental Cream. Taste feel and see the refreshing difference. Before continuing with part two of The Informer, we wish to thank RKO for making this story available. RKO are also producers of Bad Man's Territory, starring Randolph Scott with Lawrence Tierney as Jesse James. And now, The House of Squibb presents part two of Academy Award. Starring Victor McLaughlin, Margot Graham, Wallace Ford, and J.M. Carrigan in The Informer. Dan. Mary, darling. I had to see you. Oh, Mary, I love you. I love you, Dan. Oh, when is this trouble going to end? Just killing and more killing. It's hard on you women, I know. You're braver than we are. But it's Ireland, Mary. Dan, why did you come? Mary, we have to find the informer that gave Frankie away. Tell me, did Frankie think he was followed when he came home tonight? Nobody saw him. Only his friend Jippo know him. He said he had to see him first to find out whether or not there was a guard in our house. Where did he see him? At, oh, let me see, in the street before the travel agency. I see. Did he mention a man named Mulligan? No. I'm sure not. Commandant, there's a patrol of tans in the neighborhood. Thanks. Goodbye, Mary. Oh, there's a court of inquiry at one o'clock. I'll be back for you. Slip out the back way and meet me. I will, Dan. Take care of yourself. A minstrel boy to the world. Of, of all, all the men that wear the, the green, he is me darling, oh. In every fight he will be seen. He is me darling, oh. Ah, me sweet Jibbo. You have a lovely voice. A sweet voice. Shh. Listen. Even the birds are still. Where are you taking me to, you little scut? I may have to get into Katie's yet. Ah, now, there you go, there you go. Talking about Katie and we having a fine little jamboree. Now, don't worry about your little Judy. She'll be always on the streets, never fear. Yes, what do you do? Hey, let me go. Let go. You big slip. You're drunk and be dazzled. That's what you are. You're as drunk as a fiddler's dog. Take your hands off me. Oh, you think you're a king, do you? Well, you're a big lump of beef. That's all you are. You're drunk. And your last pay is spent. And I've no further use for you, Mr. Jibbo Nolan. If so, facto. Broke him, you little scut. I got a roll of bills, one right here, see? Oh, beat the holy. Where did you get it, Jippo? There's enough there to choke a horse. And me joking about it a few minutes ago. Ah, <laughs> Jippo, me boy, you're a king. <coughs> and a descendant of kings. And I'd fight for you and die for you if the time came. Here's me hand on it, Jippo. The hand of a man that's loyal and true. Come on, you little scut. I'm going to find Katie. <laughs> Of 
Papa. Where's Katie? What do you suppose he wants, Cheryl Harridan? He wants a drink. You'll get no drink here, you social climber. Why don't you go back to the gutter where you belong? Now, don't be looking to Jippo like that. And don't be looking down your nose either, you old squint. Oh! I suppose you think we have no money. So, Jippo. <laughs> oh, good boy. Holy Moses. Glasses for everybody. <laughs> Oh, help me. I want to go back home, away from all this. Uh, and, and where's your home? Near London. And uh, how much will it cost to get there? Oh, just... Uh, here, here, here. Here, take it all. <gasps> Chippo! Chippo! Oh, shut up with you. And let's have a drink. Drink for everybody! <laughs> And five are seven, and four is eleven. Eleven pounds. Come on, it's almost time. We've got to get him to the inquiry. Now, gentlemen, I want you to think to the health of King Jippo. King Jippo. As brave as a lion and as strong as a bull. I go through fire and water for him, and he do ditto for me. You've all seen the wonder of your generation tonight. Money scattered like snuff at a wake. Get up! And who, may I ask, has the impertinence to tell me and Jippo to shut up? Come on, Jippo. Commandant Gallagher is waiting. Time for the inquiry. <laughs> As you were. Peter Mulligan, do you recognize the authority of this court? I... I do. Heaven knows I do. You have a sister? Yes. But she is married and lives in America. I... He's lying! Lying! Just a minute, Jippo. You'll have your turn. It's not for me to condemn you, Jippo. Maybe you're not responsible. Why, bless you. What do you mean? What are you driving at? Get down! The rest of your testimony has been proven correct, Mulligan. Now, do you bear any man a grudge? I, I bear no one a grudge. On me, oath. No grievance against Frankie McPhillip? The Lord have mercy on his soul. What for? Where were you at half past six tonight? Why, well, I, I was walking to my home, and I passed Kerrigan going the other way. Kerrigan, uh, did you meet Mulligan at half past six tonight? Oh, you did, sir? That's all. You'll be taken home, Mulligan, in the car that brought you. I'm sorry this had to happen. Show him out, Kerrigan. Wait a minute. Sit down. Mary, will you stand, please? Thank you. Will you repeat what Frankie told you when he came home tonight? He said he met Jippo in the street. Said he had to make sure there was no guard at our home. Is that true, Jippo? Well, if not, why did you shout at the wake that you'd want him to stay away from the house? Why did you lie about Mulligan? Were you drunk well, or what? Well, I... Uh, I take it a little drop. It may be true. And what did you do after leaving Frankie? Well, suppose I don't tell you. And what are you going to do? Suit yourself. Well, I... I... I I'm all mixed up. Where did you get all the money you spent? I, I can't make nothing out, Danny. I tell you, I, I'm drunk. I'm drunk. He spent two pounds in the fish and chips. He broke a pound in Ryan's. Give a blind man a pound. Two pounds went for drinks, five pounds to some woman, four pounds to another woman called Aunt Betty, and just sent five pounds to Katie Madden, and that makes just twenty pounds! Ah, uh, me, me head is sore, Dan. I, I'm... Where did you get the twenty pounds? Now uh, tell us. I can't remember nothing. Who was the informer? I, I, I... Well, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing, Lord, Daddy. Lord, have mercy on your soul. Take him away. He got away! With this fog? Come on, lads, he mustn't get away. Dad, what if you don't find him? I'd die if I lost you, too. I'm not thinking about myself. It's all the others. The movement. It's Ireland. That poor soul knows so blasted much. Well, there's only something we could do. It's this horrible waiting. Commandant, she wants to see you. Insist on seeing you. Who? Who? She won't talk to a soul of us. I'm Katie Madden. I'm Jiffo Nolan's girl. Shut the door. I've come to beg of you on my knees. 
He didn't know what he was doing. Oh, you can't hurt him if you know how it was. I shaming him for his poverty and blaming him for mine and putting the idea into his head. Leave him go, Commandant. I can't, Katie. You know what he did. There's a dead boy lying down the street. You're asking something that's not within me power. He'll never harm you again. Do you think the Tans will let him alone now? They'll drag everything he knows out of him. His own fear will drive him to them and make him a weapon to destroy us all. All I ask is mercy. I'll take him away, please. Where is Jippo now? He... He's in my room on the other side of the church. Come on, Bartley. Tell the others. Wouldn't you be giving him a chance? One chance! I'm sorry, Katie. I can't. Jippo! Jippo! Man is inhuman. How can he walk with all those bullets in him? He won't get away. He's going into the church. We've got it surrounded now. Mercy, Jippo. Twas I that informed on your son, Mrs. McPhillip. Forgive me. Jippo. I forgive you. You didn't know what you were doing. You didn't know what you were doing. Frankie! Frankie! Your mother forgives me. Like the most ruthless gangster, disease strikes at millions of helpless victims. But medical science is constantly finding new ways to track down and wipe out this most feared of all public enemies. Working always to supply your own doctor with more effective weapons in the fight against disease, the House of Squibb has played an important role in the development of such new products as penicillin. For instance... Squibb devised many of the mass production methods that are helping to make this great drug available to all who need it. And what an immense task it is. It takes 15,000 gallons of penicillin culture, enough to fill a railway tank car, to produce a mere handful of penicillin. Yet millions of units of penicillin leave the house of Squibb every single day. And despite this production miracle, every ounce of penicillin Squibb must measure up to those standards of uniformity, purity, and efficacy which, in every one of the great family of Squib products, have made Squib a name you can trust. Next week, another great picture. The House of Squib will present Academy Awards starring Ray Milan in Arise, My Love. The Informer was written for radio by Frank Wilson, with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Our producer-director is Diego Bach. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next week at the same time, when you are invited to listen again to Academy Awards, presented by the House of Swift, a name you can trust. <laughs>